on the 30th day of October, Halloween gave to me 30 Hotel Ghost Hunters, 29 Veteran Seancing, 28 Whispering Walls, 27 Slugs of Slinking, 26 Hot Dog Ghosts, 25 Hitchhiking Ghouls, 24 Soggy Corpses, 23 Shadows Creeping, 22 Egyptian Eyeballs, 21 Acid Raves, 20 Creepy Stalkers, 19 Kiernan's Time Traveling, 18 Zombies Swatting, 17 Kegner Screeching, 16 Flying Engines, 15 Workplace Accidents, 14 Logs of Bouncing, 13 Planes Exploding, 12 Zombie Soldiers, 11 Angels Wrestling, 10 Ghostly Hitchhikers, 9 Basement Clowns, 8 Vampire Cruises, 7 Silent Heroes, 6 Prequel Bloodstones, 5 Diabolical Fledgling, four vampire pianists, three dead professors, two Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the 30th day of the 31 Days of Halloween, our penultimate recording. Uh, for this year. And uh, so let's talk about a movie I dearly, dearly love. The last uh, couple of movies uh, for each year, I wanted, I wanted to be something a little special, right? And what could be more special than talking about one of my favorite uh, Ty West films? And I've got a bunch. Ty West is a director that when I saw House of the Devil... As uh, Jamie J. Sammons can tell you, when I saw House of the Devil, I was so blown away by it. it. It was both scary and weird, and I loved it, and it warmed my heart, and all of those things happened all at the same time. I really, really loved that movie. And I really was curious about what Ty West was going to do next. And I worried that he was going to be one of those directors who had a vision for a really unique thing. And once that was realized that there wasn't anything left in the tank, that he, he had one thing to say and that he'd said it. And as history has borne out, he is sometimes erratic, but Ty West has become one of the great horror directors working. Is he a master of horror? Well, there is science to uh, back that up. That now that he has done both X and Pearl and House of the Devil and The Innkeepers. And is, is there another one that I'm missing? I, I think we need one more uh, for it, for there to be a true master of horror recognition here. And uh, so he's close. He's close to a master of horror. He's right next door to it. But The Innkeepers is the one we're talking about today. And as I mentioned yesterday when we were talking about Brooklyn 45, I adore a, uh, a a good ghost story. And The Innkeepers is right up there in the same way that I love a parlor ghost story and Brooklyn 45 scratched that itch. The other thing I really love is I love a story about a place that is about to close down and you're left with the skeleton crew dealing with it. Like a session nine sort of thing is also in that alley or in that vein. The other thing that I really like is I like amateur ghost hunters who get in over their head. And unfortunately found footage movies are rife with that. And most of the time it's not very effective and it's not very good, but this is an example of where that really works. I also like movies that are essentially two handers like this. That's what we call it in the movie game. Everybody, when you basically have two major roles and most of the scenes are just those two characters. There is of course, uh, Kelly McGillis is in this and she's got a fairly large part. And then you have a couple of other guests, but there is something inherently creepy about this premise, which is, Hey, here's this hotel. That's very old. It's about to shut down. One of the floors is already completely closed off. It's been, you know, stripped and is ready to, uh, to be retired. You only have two guests in the whole place. One of whom is a wife, uh, trying to prove a point to her husband is the way that it is, uh, it is, it is expressed in the movie. She's there with her kids. And then you have Kelly McGillis, who is a former actress who is now sort of on the healing circuit, the new age circuit, 
and is, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, staying here because I guess it's just close to where she's going to be doing her thing uh, at any rate. Aside from those people in the hotel, the only people there are the two people working there who are, you know, caretaking, essentially, uh, which is Luke and Claire. Sarah Paxton plays Claire. Pat Healy plays Luke. And they have a very good, friendly relationship. And one of the things that makes this movie as good as it is is because they are both likable in their own ways. You know, Luke is a little more gruff. And, like, Claire, Sarah Paxton as Claire is just a force of pure good in the world. And you just, like Luke, you want to just hang out with her and, and be with her and see the world through her eyes because she is so... Uh, not gullible is the wrong way to put it. She, she is quick to believe because she believes that the world is still possessed of magic. And even though she is not ambitious in the traditional way she's you know by her own admission trying to figure things out and not sure exactly what she wants to do with herself other than she loves doing this ghost hunting thing and luke is more than happy to do this with her and says you know he's had an encounter with the uh the ghost haunting the yankee peddler which is the hotel uh molly o'malley is or, or Madeline O'Malley is the name of the ghost, and there's a whole backstory. And he's working on a website to uh, show all of the evidence that they've captured. And so the whole thing takes place over this weekend, where they are mostly alone in the hotel, left to their own devices. The owner has gone on vacation and has said, "Don't bother me unless it is something major." And so they're on a timer. They've got to find this evidence of the supernatural. Uh, and that's really what Claire is fixated on. And Luke is along for the ride for the most part. He's just there to help Claire out. And over the course of the film, one of the things that you realize is that Luke has a major, major crush on Claire. And that drives so much of his character. He just adores her as I, I think as rightfully so as the audience adores her and I think we all fall in love with her the same way that Pat Healy as Luke falls in love with her which I, I think is great uh, I, I really do think that you get why he is you know bought and sold for you know Sarah Paxson's Claire it, it totally makes sense so that is that relationship. And then the rest of the movie is them exploring the hotel. And it's one of those things that if you don't do it right, it could be painfully dull. But the innkeepers is in the hands of Ty West, who understands that for a slow burn movie like this, and for a movie that's very Jaws-like in the sense that it believes that you don't show the shark any more than you have to, that you, it's more about the mood and the vibe of it. And one can argue that this is an extension of that sort of mumblecore horror that was very popular for a while. Although I think that is kind of a dismissive characterization of this movie. I think the movie itself is uh, more substantial than, than that. I think it is as quiet as it is, it is building tension. Like though there's a bit early on in the movie where Pat Healy plays a prank on Claire and is showing her this video where he's like, Hey, I, I saw this uh, recording of some paranormal thing on the web and you have to really look, you have to pay close attention. And so it draws the viewer in and you're like staring at it. And then, uh, you know, it's one of those videos where, after an almost interminable amount of time, there's just a quick jump scare where you see a face screaming at you. And it gets clear. And the movie plays with that whole notion. Like, there, there is something deeply thematic about that moment with this film's intentions and, it, and its, uh, its tone, where this movie's like, you know what, we're not gonna do that kind of jump scare. 
It, it is cheap, <laughs> and we're not going to truck with that. Although it kind of does at the end, but even at the end, when it has a moment where it is forcing the viewer to stare at a room, essentially, it doesn't give you the big shrieking face. Uh, like it, it teases early on in the movie. Instead, it it kind of, well, not kind of, it literally closes the door on you. And I think there is something that Ty West is saying about that, of, of that kind of shrieking jump scare movie isn't all that great. And this movie definitely has some moments that are creepy, but it doesn't feel like a series of jump scares the way that like a conjuring does. And I don't know if he meant it purely as a response to that kind of filmmaking, but that's how it feels to me because this is so much more about eeriness and spookiness. And, and like I said, the vibe, the, the, uh, the way that the place is empty and the sounds of the place, the sound design of this movie is so very good. And as the, the tension of the movie ratchets up because Claire starts to experience things and starts to see things. And as that happens, Luke naturally starts freaking out because he's not really prepared for this. And Claire is often left alone. And one of the things that I, I find heartbreaking about the movie is that Luke is always trying to do the right thing, but he's genuinely disturbed and freaked out by it. But he still tries to get, he, he still tries to do right by Claire. And I think that is important to his character. That even though he kind of runs out on her at one point, he does come back. And when you get to the end of this movie and Claire's ultimate descent into the basement of this place and, and her uh, ultimate fate, that it feels somehow inevitable. That, uh, and, and that's how, sort of what Kelly McGillis says. Like, there's nothing we could have done here. And, oh man, it's just like every little bit of it. The, the psychic actress who is, is sort of a, a guide and, and, you know, telling uh, Claire, like, no matter what happens, you got to stay out the basement and you need to leave here. And there's almost that Amityville horror flight at the end of like, let's just pack up some shit and let's get out of here. It is not worth staying in this hotel, but you can't leave right away. And it's just so good. It's such a good ghost story. And one of the things that I dearly, dearly love about this movie is it does feel like a traditional ghost story, well told, but it's got that modern sensibility where it's not so slowly paced that it, it it's just nothing happening. You do see stuff. You do experience stuff. It's not like... You know, I'm thinking of like uh, the original Haunting of Hill House, uh, the the film, or The Uninvited, or movies like that from the 50s and 60s, where it was always a question of, is this real? Is this not real? And this movie doesn't fuck with that. It's like, this is 100% real. What is happening? What, what Claire is experiencing? All of this is real. All of this is creepy. We're going to show you some of the goods. There's some really scary imagery throughout this movie and I just love it. I just love the movie so much. And even when you get to the end and you could argue that the end is kind of unsatisfying, but I disagree with that. I think it's exactly the ending that a movie like this needs because you've already been given the goods. You don't need some final gross out scare to sell the movie. Like, you know, Bagul from Sinister suddenly sticking his head into the frame and screeching and whatnot. Uh, this movie is a little bit classier than that. It's classy. So that is uh, The Innkeepers, the, the penultimate movie that we're talking about in our 31 Days of Halloween. We've got one more to go, which is our big Halloween movie. What will it be? Well, place your bets. Uh, remember, remember to only wager in uh, the places where gambling is legal. Uh, check local laws and statutes if this applies to you. Okay, that's it. Have a great Monday. It is the day before Halloween. Uh, suit up, folks. Tomorrow night, uh, hand out the candy. Enjoy the spooks and the scares. And I will see you tomorrow for our final, ultimate Halloween edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Mm -hmm.